So how does a doctor diagnose Meniere's disease if there isn't necessarily a known cause of it? So one of the most important things is going to be really getting into an exam um, and, and really taking a thorough medical history. So what's important with regard to kind of how we're working collaboratively is working with a neurootologist or um, a physician that's very specifically kind of anchored in the Meniere space and up to date on current kind of trends and following up in the research realm. But at the same time, kind of understanding what a diagnosis of Meniere's disease really requires. So the patient has to have two episodes of vertigo and the vertigo typically lasts about 20 minutes, but no longer than 12 hours. So it's not gonna last for days and days at a time. Uh, there does have to be a hearing loss that's verified. And then um, the patient has to present with tinnitus or a full sensation or fullness in the ear. In addition to kind of excluding any other known problems. So that's going to be very important. And that's where our piece of the puzzle comes in. Because excluding the other known um, causes literally means looking at the hearing test. So going in and actually doing um, an audiological evaluation, which is the hearing test, looking at different pitches. People with Meniere's disease are usually going to have problems in the low frequencies or even a combined high and low frequency um, with normal hearing in the mid ranges. So it's a, it's a really interesting pattern in the testing. And then getting into the balance assessment. So in between these bouts of vertigo, the patient is essentially going to have their balance returned to normal for most people. Some people will have ongoing problems, but looking at the actual diagnostic data um, is gonna be important. And so what we look at specifically, um, the VNG testing, which is that video, um, <laughs> video nystag, nystag, just call it a VNG. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Like it's Monday morning, um, but rotary chair testing, um, VEMP testing. VEMP testing is really interesting right now because it's, it's really promising not only for diagnosing, but also monitoring Meniere's disease. So there are certain char characteristics that um, in the affected ear we're noticing in specifically the VEMP testing. We also look at posturography, uh, video head impulse testing, and then the ECOG. Um, the ECOG isn't necessarily a diagnostic test for Meniere's. It's not specific for Meniere's disease, but it really does help determine if there's an abnormal buildup in the fluid of the ear. And so those tests are used um, to basically rule out other conditions. But then in addition to the, the physician's gonna be looking at um, blood panels. So making sure nothing's popping up um, on any imaging. So maybe even an MRI to rule out disorders um, that are very similar to Meniere's. So it's gonna be important to kind of look at the big picture, not necessarily just kind of jump, you know, really quickly to a diagnosis.